check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga huwan na gaya mo ang matuto. Hi there! Kamusta? I hope you're doing great! For today's lesson, you will learn how to compose effective paragraphs. I know that paragraph writing is one of the many tasks you commonly do in school. But are you sure if the paragraphs you have written in the past were effective? What makes an effective paragraph? Just watch and learn it here in this video. The target most essential learning competency for this video is Composing an effective paragraph. Are you ready? Let's begin! Paragraph writing can sometimes be a difficult task, especially if you don't know what to write because there are just too many topics to choose from or you just don't have enough knowledge about the topic your teacher gave to you. Kaya minsan, para matapos ka agad, isusulat mo na lang kahit anong maisip mo tungkol sa topic, kahit halos wala nang connect at wala na sa ayos ang flow ng ideas mo. Ang importante sa iyo ay eh, mukha na siyang paragraph dahil mahaba na at marami na ang sentences na naisulat mo, sabay sabing, pwede na yan! Actually, hindi pwede yan. Long paragraph is not equivalent to effective paragraph. O kaya real talk. Iniisip mo, the longer, the better. Kasi, di naman pagtsatsaga ang basahin ni teacher yan. That is very wrong because your teacher reads your paragraphs. To start, let's define the word paragraph. What is a paragraph? A paragraph is a group of several sentences connected together by a single idea. It consists of a topic sentence that expresses the main thought of the paragraph. This main thought should be discussed in a greater detail with supporting sentences. A paragraph should be unified, coherent, and well-developed. The paragraph's main idea should be supported with specific information that develops or discusses the main idea in greater detail. Parts of a paragraph An effective paragraph contains three main parts, a topic sentence, the body, and the concluding sentence. A topic sentence is often the first sentence of a paragraph. The body of the paragraph usually follows, containing supporting details. Supporting sentences help explain, prove, or enhance the topic sentence. The supporting details of the paragraph explain, describe, or develop the main idea given in the topic sentence. The concluding sentence is the last sentence in the paragraph. It reminds the reader of the main point by restating it in different words. It usually summarizes or comments on the main idea. The length of the paragraph depends on the complexity of the topic. So, just to give you an illustration of how a paragraph looks like, think of a burger, just like what you see in the picture. Let's discuss the topic sentence further. The topic sentence tells the topic, or what the paragraph is about, and the writer's attitude or idea about the topic. A topic sentence is the most important sentence in a paragraph. It is a helpful guide to both the writer and the reader. The writer can see what information to include and what to exclude. The reader, on the other hand, can see what the paragraph is going to be about and is, therefore, better prepared to understand it. An important point to remember is that a topic sentence is a complete sentence containing both a topic and a controlling idea. 
Characteristics of an effective topic sentence A good topic sentence is concise or to the point, and emphatic meaning resounding or forceful. It is no longer than the idea requires, and it stresses the important word or phrase. Number 1. Topic sentence is brief. Not all topics can be explained in six words, but whether they take six or sixty, they should be phrased in no more words than are absolutely necessary. Number two, the sentence is clear and strong. Number three, the sentence stands first in the paragraph. This is where the topic sentence generally belong, at or near the beginning. Positioning a topic sentence It is mentioned that a topic sentence is usually found in the beginning of a paragraph, but not always. Where can you effectively put it in your sentence? If you want readers to see your point immediately, open with a topic sentence. This strategy can be particularly useful in letters of application or in argumentative writing. When specific details lead up to a generalization, putting the topic sentence at the end of the paragraph makes sense. Occasionally, a paragraph's main idea is so obvious that it does not need to be stated explicitly in a topic sentence. Ngayon na mas may alam ka na about topic sentence, let's try what you've learned by identifying the topic sentence in the given paragraphs. Where is the topic sentence located? In the beginning, middle, or at the end? First paragraph. After reading the new TV guide this week, I had just one thought. Why are we still being bombarded with reality shows? This season, the plague of reality television continues to darken our airwaves. Along with the return of viewer favorites, we are to be cursed with yet another mindless creation. Prisoner follows the daily lives of eight suburban housewives who have chosen to be put in jail for the purposes of this fake psychological experiment. A preview for the first episode shows the usual tears and tantrums associated with reality television. I dread to think what producers will come up with the next season. But if any of them are reading this blog, stop it! We've had enough reality television to last us a lifetime. Where is the topic sentence located? Answer. The first sentence of this paragraph is the topic sentence. It tells the reader that the paragraph will be about reality television shows, and it expresses the writer's distaste for these shows through the use of the word bombarded. Each of the following sentences in the paragraph supports the topic sentence by providing further information about a specific reality television show. The final sentence is the concluding sentence. It reiterates the main point that viewers are bored with reality television shows by using different words from the topic sentence. Let's try another paragraph. Last year, a cat traveled 130 miles to reach its family, who had moved to another state and had left their pet behind. Even though it had never been to their new home, the cat was able to track down its former owners. A dog in my neighborhood can predict when its master is about to have a seizure. It makes sure that he does not hurt himself during an epileptic fit. Compared to many animals, our own senses are almost dull. Can you tell where the topic sentence is located in this paragraph? Answer is, the last sentence of this paragraph is the topic sentence. It draws on specific examples. A cat that tracked down its owners and a dog that can predict seizures. And then makes a general statement that draws a conclusion from these examples. Animal senses are better than humans. In this case, the supporting sentences are placed before the topic sentence, and the concluding sentence is the same as the topic sentence. 
This technique is frequently used in persuasive writing. The writer produces detailed examples as evidence to back up his or her point, preparing the reader to accept the concluding topic sentence as the truth. Sometimes, the topic sentence appears in the middle of a paragraph. Read the following example. The topic sentence is underlined for you. For many years, I suffered from severe anxiety every time I took an exam. Hours before the exam, my heart would begin pounding, my legs would shake, and sometimes, I would become physically unable to move. Last year, I was referred to a specialist and finally found a way to control my anxiety. Breathing exercises It seems so simple, but by doing just a few breathing exercises, a couple of hours before an exam, I gradually got my anxiety under control. The exercises help slow my heart rate and make me feel less anxious. Better yet, they require no pills, no equipment, and very little time. It's amazing how just breathing correctly has helped me learn to manage my anxiety symptoms. In this paragraph, the underlined sentence is the topic sentence. It expresses the main idea, that breathing exercises can help control anxiety. The preceding sentences enable the writer to build up to his main point by using a personal anecdote. The supporting sentences then expand on how breathing exercises help the writer by providing additional information. The last sentence is the concluding sentence and restates how breathing can help manage anxiety. Now that you know more about paragraph and its parts, let us find out next how to compose a paragraph effectively. A good paragraph possesses the following elements. Unity, coherence, and adequate development. Unity. A paragraph should express a single thought that unifies all the sentences it has. Coherence. All sentences in a paragraph should clearly relate to one another systemically or logically. Adequate development. The topic of a paragraph should be discussed entirely and sufficiently by providing supporting details. How long is a paragraph? How many sentences should there be in a paragraph? The question of how many sentences should there be in a paragraph or how long is a paragraph is a common one. Unfortunately, there is no definitive answer to this question, as quality paragraphs are measured in the ideas and concepts addressed rather than sentences and word counts. When to begin a new paragraph? Kailan ka nga ba dapat magsimula ulit ng iyong paragraph? One of the more common difficulties for students is to recognize when it is time to begin a new paragraph. A new paragraph is needed when you are switching to a new idea, emphasizing a contrasting argument, or you want to break up a lengthy paragraph. There are many ways to elaborate the main idea of a paragraph. You can make sure that your paragraph is well developed by using one or more methods below. Define your terms, provide examples and illustrations, explain a procedure, compare and contrast, Evaluate Cause and Effect For the last part of this video, here are the top tips for tight paragraph writing. First, consistency is the key. Be consistent in your verb tenses and point of view. For example, shifts from the past tense to present tense without good reason can be disorientating as time travel itself. Second, use transition words and phrases. These words and phrases are a great way to link concepts and ideas within a paragraph, as well as helping to form a bridge to the next paragraph. Some useful transitional words and phrases include although, in spite of, 
therefore, for this reason, as a result. We also discussed some of this in our previous videos about cohesive devices and grammatical signals. Check them out in the link in the description box below. Third, employ parallel structures. I also discussed this before, so you can refer to our previous lesson if you want to know more about parallel structures. Using parallel structures brings flow to a piece of writing, making it easier to read and understand for the reader. Parallel structures involve using two or more phrases or sentences that use the same parts of speech and grammatical structures. Not only does this make the writing easier to read, it helps the reader make connections between ideas. Fourth, breathe life into the writing. We often forget that the origins of the written word lie in speech. We lose a lot of the color and expression of the spoken word when we lay it out cold on the page. Fortunately, you can breathe life back into their words with a few simple techniques. Imbue or instill your writing with color and vitality by weaving anecdotes, verbal illustrations, rich details, and facts and figures throughout their writing. Lastly, edit and proofreading. Writing is a craft, and like any craft, some refining is required. Take the time to polish your final draft by checking the grammar, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and others. So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed! See ya!